Peace to Prosperity. A vision to improve the lives of the Palestinian and Israeli people, commonly known as the Trump Peace Plan, is a proposal by the Trump administration to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Donald Trump formally unveiled the plan in a White House press conference alongside Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on January 28, 2020. Palestinian representatives were not invited. The plan was offered by a team led by Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner II, both the West Bank settlers, Yesha Council III, and the Palestinian leadership rejected the plan. The former because it envisaged a Palestinian state three, the latter arguing it is too biased in favor of Israel when the plan is divided into two parts, an economic portion and a political portion. On June 22, 2019, the Trump administration released the economic portion of the plan, titled Peace to Prosperity. The political portion was released in late January 2020. During the press conference announcing the plan, Netanyahu announced that the Israeli government would immediately annex the Jordan Valley and West Bank settlements while committing not to create new settlements in areas left to the Palestinians for at least four years. As ambassador to Israel David M. Friedman claimed that the Trump administration had given permission for an immediate annexation, stating that Israel does not have to wait at all, and we will recognize it. The Likud spokesman tweeted that Israeli sovereignty over settlements would be declared on the following Sunday. The Trump administration clarified that no such green light had been given. No decision would take place before new elections and a new government had been formed. Critics of the plan, including all the leading Democratic presidential candidates five, have denounced it as a smokescreen for annexation six seven. Proposed benefits to the Palestinians from the plan are contingent on a list of conditions that have been denounced by opponents of the plan as impossible or fantastic. The Trump peace plan is called by its proponents the deal of the century phrasing used by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a joint press conference with Donald Trump announcing the plan 11. Critics of the proposal were quick to bring changes on the term. The Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas reacted immediately with a repost that it was the slap of the century 12. The Secretary General of the Palestine Liberation Organization Sayyid Barakat tweeted that it would be known as the fraud of the century 13. The Economist called it the steal of the century 14. Given widespread negative comments, a Haritz commentator wrote of the joke of the century. The Balfour Declaration was a public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War announcing support for the establishment of the National Home for the Jewish People in Palestine, then an Ottoman region with a small minority Jewish population. The proposal was subsequently endorsed by the League of Nations as part of partitioning of the Ottoman lands. In 1917, Jews constituted less than 8% of the population. By 1947, they comprised about a third of the population, while owning just 7% of the land. That year the United Nations adopted a partition plan, which allotted 56% of the land to 30% of the population that was Jewish. This was rejected by the Arab nations and hostilities broke out between the sides. When Israel declared its independence, several neighboring Arab states entered the conflict. At war's end, Israel controlled of 78% of mandatory Palestine, and much of the local Arab populace had either been expelled or fled. According to the IDF 1516, Palestinians constitute the majority of the population in the area Israel now controls Israel, the Gaza Strip, and the West Bank 1516, both Clinton's and the subsequent Trump plan confine most of that majority to an area less than a quarter. Development of the plan began in November 2017, led by Kushner. Chief Negotiator Jason Greenblatt, Deputy National Security Advisor Dina Powell, and Ambassador David Friedman, 35, Kushner, a property developer married to Trump's daughter Ivanka, had no prior experience of diplomacy. 1436 asked the parties not to talk about history, and reportedly never discussed his plan with the Palestinians. 37, according to Peter Beinart of Jewish Currents, another key participant in drafting the proposal was David Friedman, who became Trump's ambassador to Israel after representing his bankrupt casinos. 38, had close ties to the Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank, compared Jewish and American critics of Israel to collaborators with Nazism and was skeptical about the idea that Palestinians should have the state. 37. In December 2017, Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. 
A key member of Trump's team, the Arabist Dina Powell, left the team on good terms. Two days after the announcement 39, the move was condemned by Arab countries, and Palestinians broke off contacts with the Trump administration too. Though maintaining intelligence cooperation with the CFRD, Trump reacted by ending both bilateral aid for Palestinians and contributions for Rule 241, citing the PA's refusal to take part in the administration's peace initiative 42. The United States also shut down the Palestinian diplomatic office in Washington 43. In February 2019, Kushner and his personal advisor Berkowitz flew to Oman, Bahrain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Turkey and Saudi Arabia in order to unveil their closely guarded Plan 44. Qatari Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Lil Walkater gave no indication that the meeting had provided much detail regarding the political Plan 44. Jason Greenblatt played an important role in Trump's March 25, 2019 acceptance of United States recognition of the Golan Heights as part of Israel was thereafter shunned by the Palestinian Authority 45. In the Palestinian view, Friedman, throughout his two years of engagement, acted as Israel's spokesman, a country he would never criticize, while he would frequently lambast the Palestinian side on his Twitter account 45. In April 2019, Greenblatt said that plan does not call for a confederation model 46, or for a transfer of land from Egypt's Sinai Peninsula to the Palestinians 47. When asked in June 2019, Greenblatt said that the Trump plan will include a resolution to all of the core issues, including the refugee issue, and will also focus on Israel's security concerns. 48. In November 2019, the US abandoned its four decades old position that Jewish settlements in the West Bank were inconsistent with international law. Due. According to Israel Kasnit of the Jewish News Syndicate, the U.S. policy changes between 2017 and 2019 are described by Mideast experts and Israel advocates as a paradigm shift 49, while Jane Kinnamont writing for her it says that the all-new economic peace approach has been tried before and doesn't work 50. When the plan emerged, Yehuda Shal argued that, far from being an unconventional approach that broke with tradition, the proposals were actually remarkably similar to the details set forth both in the Drabble's plan, written for the World Zionist Organization, and published over 40 years earlier, in 1979, entitled Master Plan for the Development of Settlements in Judea and Samaria, 1979-1983 and key elements of the earlier Ellen Plan 51. The aim of the Drabbles plan was to ensure Jewish settlement in the Palestinian territories while blocking the possibility that a Palestinian state could ever emerge. In late June 2019, the economic plan was unveiled at a U.S.-led Peace to Prosperity conference in Manama, Bahrain. The Palestinian leadership boycotted the entire event 52. According to Bess Levin, writing for Vanity Fair, the whole conference was penned by experts, citing one who described it as the Monty Python. Israel in the proposed annexation The plan itself places no conditions on Israel with regard to proposals to annex parts of the West Bank 9. On January 29, 2020, Prime Minister Netanyahu said he was planning to proceed with annexing 30% of the West Bank at a vote on February 1, 2070. The meeting was never scheduled as the US message shifted on their position on annexation 71. However, on January 29th, the US ambassador to Israel did state that before any annexation of the West Bank or the Jordan Valley took place, the Trump administration wants to form a joint committee with Israel to discuss the issue, and that it is impossible to know how long this process will take. We need to ensure the annexation matches the map in our plan 72. And on January 30th, Kushner said Washington wants Israel to wait until after its March 2nd election before making any moves towards settlement annexation in the West Bank 73. On February 2nd, 2020, Netanyahu's cabinet cancelled a meeting to vote on the annexation of 30% of the West Bank after receiving mixed signals from the US-74. On February 4, 2020, Israeli settler leader David el Hayani, the chairman of the Yesha Council, said Kushner took a knife and put it in Netanyahu's back. The settler leader said a senior U.S. 
official told them that if the Palestinians did not agree to the plan within 48 hours, Israel would be permitted to annex more than 30% of the West Bank 75, responding to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announcing on February 8 that his government had begun to draw up maps of land in the occupied West Bank, in accordance with us President Donald Trump's proposed peace plan, Ambassador Friedman indicated that any unilateral action in advance of the completion of the committee process endangers the plan and American recognition 76. On 15 February, the membership of the committee was announced. It includes Friedman, his policy advisor Ariel Lightstone, and Scott Leith, a National Security Council expert on Israel. Israeli members include Tourism Minister Yariv Levin and Israeli Ambassador Ron Dermer. New deadline for the conclusion of deliberations has been set 77. Palestinian statehood the plan puts the Palestinians on probation, establishing a set of conditions they must meet and adopting Netanyahu's view that a shrunken Palestinian entity will be a state in name only with Israel in control of its borders, airspace, electromagnetic spectrum, foreign policy and security 78. It proposes a state of Palestine with a capital on the outskirts of East Jerusalem 79, which will not be established up to four years into the execution of the plan 80. The plan would be conditional on Palestinians taking steps to become self-governing 79, however, the sovereignty the state of Palestine would possess is disputed. Many argue the Trump plan creates a Palestinian state with only limited sovereignty 43-81-82, while others argue the state would not have sovereignty 83-84. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said the proposal gives Palestinians a chance to achieve conditional, limited sovereignty 85. The Jerusalem Post argues sovereignty of Palestine would be limited as Israel would retain full security control 86. Israel would also control Palestine's borders and airspace 87. The Palestinians must disarm the governing authority of the Gaza Strip Hamas together with Islamic Jihad movement in Palestine and all Palestinians under their authority 78 recognize Israel as a Jewish state 78 refrain from any attempt to join any international organization without the consent of the state of Israel 88 take no action and shall dismiss all pending actions against the state of Israel the United States and any of their citizens before the International Criminal Court the International Court of Justice, and all other tribunals 88 take no action against any Israeli or United States citizen before Interpol or any non-Israeli or United States as applic. Defense and border regime the state of Palestine shall be fully demilitarized and remain as so 107. The state of Israel will be responsible for security at all international crossings into the state of Palestine 108. The state of Israel will continue to maintain control over the airspace and the electromagnetic spectrum. The Israeli Navy will have the right to block prohibited weapons and weapon-making materials from entering the state of Palestine. The state of Palestine will not have the right to forge intelligence or security agreements with any state or organization that adversely affect the state of Israel's security, as determined by the state of Israel 108. Status of Jerusalem, Palestinian Capital, and Holy Sites Main Article Status of Jerusalem The plan affirms Israel has a right to the entirety of undivided Jerusalem, recognizing it as Israel's capital 109. The plan does accept a Palestinian capital for a future state of Palestine to be located outside and east and north of the separation barrier, in that part of East Jerusalem encompassing Kafr Akab and the eastern refugee camp of Shafat and Abu Dis 4397. Martin Indyk described the Palestinian portion as only a sliver of East Jerusalem 94. It would bear whatever name Palestinians decide to call it. Perhaps Alk was 110, according to Dobison, designating such a site as Jerusalem involves a semantic game 22, a fragmented entity across several neighborhoods that are miles apart from each other, separated by Israeli communities and major roads, and share little in common 111-112. Abu Dis is variously described as a decrepit, lawless enclave 111, a gang ridden Salah 112, or a grim neighborhood 14, with a single main street and higgledy piggledy alleys shooting off at strange angles 111, abutting a hulking concrete separation barrier, on the other side of which lies Jerusalem and its distant holy sites 14. The plan puts the Haram al Sharif slash Temple Mount, including Al Aqsa Mosque 94, under Israeli sovereignty.
Well, in one part it states that the status quo there will be maintained 43. Elsewhere it appears to envisage major changes to the status quo by permitting non-Muslims, Jews and Christians to pray there. That would break with the status quo, one which Benjamin Netanyahu reaffirmed in 2015-113-114. The plan rejects Palestinian claims to Haram al-Sharif, instead keeping it under Jordanian custodianship 115. The plans gives Israel the task of safeguarding the holy sites and guaranteeing freedom of worship. In February 2020 it was announced that the land Trump's plan slates in Adar for a special world-class terrorist zone in the future Palestinian state for Muslim tourists to Jerusalem 117 would be earmarked for a new Israeli settlement spanning 310 acres all the remaining land between the separation wall and Adar its industrial zone with a projected 6009,000 housing units 118 private individuals owning parts of the area are predominantly Palestinians but the plan for Sees reallocating areas without seeking the owner's consent. It would be the first Jewish settlement in East Jerusalem since 1991 when Har Homa was established. 119. Status of refugees see also. 1 million plan under the Trump plan. There would be no right of return for Palestinian refugees from the wars of 1948 and 1967 into Israel 12121. The return of any Palestinian refugees would be subject to Israel's giving its approval. 18. Were the deal signed, the assistance of an to the Palestinian population would be terminated. 120. The precise number of Palestinian refugees usually thought to lie somewhere between the contemporary Israeli figure of 500,000 and the UNRPR estimate of 9100120 to many of whom settled in refugee camps in neighboring states is a matter of dispute 123. But around 80% of the Arab inhabitants of what became Israel half of the Arab total of mandatory Palestine either fled or were ex-